So then we got to Tony Schiavone with Sting and Darby Allen, which sounds like kind of like an old folk song with Sting and Darby Allen. And of course, Sting thanked Philadelphia because he didn't thank him last week because he wasn't in Philadelphia. And he thanked Darby Allen, called him the best tag team partner I ever had. And now, is there heat with f***ing Luger? Because then later on, Sting said, I know I got a lot of ooze when I said that. You thought I was going to say somebody else. Well, it, what was it? it? When he talked about, um, or later on, when he accosted Edge, you know, he said, I, I drank the Kool-Aid once. Is there heat with him and Luger? I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that. I mean, they were saying all sorts of stuff. Shivani also said that Sting was the wrestler that put TBS wrestling on the map. <laughs> they said that multiple times. And then they introduced Ric Flair. But multiple times yeah, they said yeah. and then, that Sting but here was, was the this wrestler. other guy. And then, all, and by the way, goddamn Dusty would like to have a word 10 years previously, but Listen, nevertheless. We're talking TBS wrestling too. <laughs> would like a word. Yeah, Bobby exactly. Rich. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. Tony Atlas would like a foot or a word. <laughs> but anyway, so Sting and Sting also thanks Tony Khan. And then Tony Schiavone takes the microphone and says, well, Tony Khan should thank you. And he is. So he and Tony Schiavone went off on this wordy. I don't know if he got lost coming around the far turn, but he had to, you know, come back around to it. And finally introduced a present for Sting and they play Flair's music and out comes Ric Flair. And I got the, the people were surprised because he was obviously unadvertised. It wasn't a, Oh my God, it's the rock or Oh my God, it's John Cena unadvertised. Like we've gotten over the last, you know, couple of months it was well yeah he's here wow but it wasn't like holy shit how did they pull this off he was a gift why is he a gift <laughs> tony <laughs> khan has a special gift for sting the gift is that rick flair was allowed in the building well no because tony khan just watched the toy and now he understands how to deal with with things like that but but anyway does that make tony shivani the uh, ned Beatty character in that film Yes, yes, it does. But Flair gets in the ring and the fans start chanting. Then finally, holy shit, holy shit. But Shivani says, the announcer of the program, says, damn right, you can say it. So he's encouraging the fans to say holy shit on television when they've been trying to bleep the fucks and the, the fucks and the sucks and the ducks and all the other things. Anyway. Flair put Sting over big time. You know, the greatest he's ever been in a ring with, etc. But then, was this an ad lib where he said, "I wa hey, what's that march? You're going to retire? I want to ride the, the wagon all the way with you. <laughs> I'll be here right with you till March. What Did he just book himself on live television where Tony's in the back at the monitor going, my God, he's 100 grand a night. Although it is funny, the idea of Ric Flair managing Sting and Darby Allen yeah. <laughs> in Route to Revolution. Well, so whether or not that was a, a, a little seed that needed to be planted or whether it was Rick booking himself for another six months, then he and Sting wooed at each other and Rick gave him a playful chop. And then here came the Christian Cage music interrupting. And thank God, because we needed... A little pick-me-up at this point. And here comes Christian with Dino and his new son, Nick Plain. Good old Nick Plain. What the fuck? Just a droop-faced fucking expression. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying, my God, we, we, we have pretty much, we've eliminated the generation in between that, that, should be on top here and what we've we've got one guy in his 70s one guy in his 60s and christian's in his 50s still trying to keep the whole thing together and then the the other bunch is not even ready for fucking prime time it darby standing next to sting and 
Flair looks like goddamn contest winner staggered in. And at least Dino looks like something till you see him wrestle. And Christian looks like a star. And there's Nick looking like they're doing a goddamn Make-A-Wish fucking appearance with him. It... it is he, there he, works in the, in the he works in that role. He works in that role, I think, for the way they're using him right now. In what role? The here, it, it, would, if this was a movie, would he be credited as slack jawed Dullard? He is a eighteen year old who just turned heel, and he's going along with this other heel, and he's skinny and he's inexperienced, and they're taking advantage of him. And he works in that role. If he showed up and he was two twenty and jacked. It wouldn't work as an eighteen year old as well. Uh, come back to me when you're 25, kid. Anyway, so Christian ripped Flair. <laughs> Tony Khan, he said Tony Khan gave Sting a suit, gold chains, and a black liver. And he promoted Sting and Darby. And, of course, Christian wants a six-man tag with him and Dino and Nick against Sting and Darby and a partner. And it and he and of course they said, well, Flair's standing right there. If you want him, get we'll take anybody. And he didn't lock him into it, but he teased it enough to where hopefully that's what people they hopefully they think that's what people will think. Uh, if for a six man, if you want to get a partner at full gear. And Sting then sneezed because he's allergic to jackasses. That was kind of lame. Well, it it. Riggy Morton was funnier when he did it 30 years ago. And he accepted, they'll find a partner and we'll see ya. And that was pretty much that. And of course, as we're going to find out later, the partner's going to be Edge, who will not fight his friend Christian for two more weeks or three more weeks, maybe. Uh, but will Flair be in the corner now that he's booked himself? I think, again, going with the idea, too, that Tony Khan is trying to build up these numbers going into the end of the year. Maybe Flair will be around. We'll see what kind of reaction this gets from the AEW fans. Now, we did hear or did see a lot of chatter online from people. Here's Tony Khan, who's been ripping Vince McMahon for, and rightly so, in a sense, for his misdeeds, his crimes, whatever they are. Shooting his shots. His payoffs, the women, whatever's going on. Okay, and then you turn around, you hire Ric Flair two weeks later? That's what people are jumping on. There's a double standard there. Well, no, he didn't hire him. He just rented him. He's an independent contractor. Tony is not responsible for the outside-the-ring activities of Ric Flair from 30 years ago just because he chooses to bring him out and give him as a present to another one of his action figures. It was 20 years ago. And it would also... Remember... Wasn't it Flair that went into business for himself on TNA television and changed his mind on voting for one of the gut check guys? I don't know. Is that true? I don't know. Yes, <laughs> it was. Now that I'm saying it out loud, yes, it was. It, the, the, that's why I'm saying Flair will fucking just blurt things out. I think he said, yeah, I'll be with you the whole way till March. So Tony would book him on every pay-per-view at every show now because Flair was the deciding vote on one of the gut check guys, and it was a work, obviously. And they told him to vote no, and the guy fucking fired up and did something. He, and Flair said, fuck it, I'll vote for you. And they had to give him a contract. So, who knows? Did you ever think working with Ric Flair, and of course you were very close to Ric Flair, you were put on the booking committee by Ric Flair, did you ever think that when he was in his mid to late 70s, this would be his fashion sense? No, I didn't. No, I didn't get this. Uh, I assumed he was going to be a Michaels of Kansas City customer until until his final days. I didn't know that he'd go to Snoop Dogg's of Brooklyn instead or whatever. He's is Michaels of Kansas City on acid. I don't, well, I'll tell you, it, my Aunt Lola had a couch cover in the 60s that looked like his suit he was wearing this particular evening. But anyway, so now they've set up a six man tag for full gear. Uh, between the Christian contingent, and not in a religious way, but in his professional name, and Sting and Darby and, and... Well, we'll find that out in a second. 